Hey there. Are you looking for housing? Feels like every single year, rent keeps getting higher and higher, and Eugene is no exception to this. However, our city council is planning to mitigate that. There's been this program called the Low Income Rental Housing Property Tax Exemption, and it started in 1990 as a way to keep properties to get their rent below a certain line. Now, I got to talk to housing policy analyst Laura Hammond, so let's see what she has to say about this. Well, the purpose of the program is to help uh, create and preserve more affordable housing in the city of Eugene. Um, we do that by allowing properties that are offering their um, residents rents that are typically much lower than market rate rents, uh, reductions in rent. So if they can reduce their rent, we can offer them a property tax exemption to help keep that property affordable. Now, let's see which properties fall under this policy. And that's where I was stuck for a while. See, in order to film in these private locations, I needed to get special media access, which I had to ask via email. And that took a really long time, and quite frankly, is a little embarrassing to describe just how long. So instead, I wanted to show my findings through this map that I printed out. Really exciting stuff we do at the Emerald, as I promise. And about half of these properties I couldn't find any information on through Google Maps, so I kind of have to take these out now. Where are these buildings? And then a few of these properties are actually owned by two majority companies, those being Guardian and St. Vincent de Paul, with the rest of these being independent or otherwise. I sent out emails and phone calls to them, and now we wait. Thankfully, I managed to get two back. One from an independent co-op named Emerald Village, and then the other from a representative at St. Vincent de Paul. Now that, you know, all this is done, we can finally continue our video. Woo! Just having more housing in general, I think helps, uh, helps moderate rents in, in our community to the extent possible. Um, so that might be helpful for students as well. The demographics covered by these properties are very diverse. From students to elderly, there is housing made for all the citizens of Eugene. Actually, on the topic, if you're a student scrambling for a place to live next year, a lot of these apartments are roughly 10 minutes away from the university via car, alongside being nearby bus lines. But if you don't actually want the standard apartment experience, there are a few co-ops under this policy. If you're looking for less space to clean and less rent to deal with, these tiny house units could be new favorites. Laura also explained how the policy works to incentivize companies to help more vulnerable populations. We have some specialty housing that's really focused on particular populations, whether it's veterans or folks exiting homelessness, or even folks um, who have a conviction history. You know, those are important um, populations too that have a hard time finding housing, and this is um, just provides those extra incentives to help create it and make it available. I want to end this video on a really nice note about how these properties add to the neighborhoods in Eugene. You know, when we're trying to promote more affordable housing in the community, it's great when we can point to developments that are um, really, you know, adding to a neighborhood so that when we want to create one in a new neighborhood, folks there can feel like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great addition to our neighborhood and we're going to be excited when it gets built. It seems like the city council is trying hard to balance between getting more housing and making sure the people already in homes don't feel forgotten about. I hope to hear more good news from the council about this, and thank you for letting me tell you what I found. My name is Jake with the Daily Emeralds, and I hope you have a great day.